All righty. Well, I'm excited about the this series that we're in. Wait for it. Uh, today's another special day, but today is baby dedication. So we're going to actually, I'm hearing that there is a father on the way, so we're going to wait and do that at the end of the message. And uh, so if uh, we won't call out any names, his, his last name sounds like Wolf, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, we'll, we're going to wait for him because this is a special time. We don't want to do it without him. So we're going to wait. So I, I do want to share my message with you this morning uh, about, about the Holy Spirit. It's something we don't talk about enough, I don't think, here at WRC. I think the church in general doesn't talk about it. And so it's important for us to, to understand what the Holy Spirit does for us. And so we, there's so many things that the, the church can do. Like, like you need to be connected to people. You need to be in a life group. Uh, life group is actually open. All those, all those are open. And so we'll launch life groups the first week of September. And so I uh, so hope you'll be in a group. We have all kinds of different groups for different age groups. If you have a student from 6th to 12th grade, Sunday nights right here from 5 to 6.30 is their small group. We have a young adult small group. We have, young, we have women's small groups and men's small groups. We have a prayer small group. We have freedom small groups. Anybody been through freedom yet? So, no. Okay, three. Really? Raise your hand if you've been through freedom. There we go. All right. Okay. Y'all need to make some noise. Y'all going to be up. People going like, I ain't going through freedom. They don't even like freedom. But freedom is so awesome. You need to go through freedom. And, and I'm, I'm not talking about, well, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not. Fill in the blank. I'm not a drunk. I'm not a crackhead. I'm not, I'm not addicted to anything. You still need freedom. There's some stuff that you're holding on to. Uh, kind of the phrasing, the word that kind of came to me this morning in prayer was exposure. Like, like, like you don't, you, some things need to be exposed in your life. You've been covering up for a little bit too long, and so we never get healing until there's exposure. And so the devil hates to sh- for us to shed light, for God to shed light on some issues, because when you do, you have to deal with it. When, you, when light gets shed on issues in your life, you have to deal with it. You have to do something about it. So, so that's our prayer for you. And the Holy Spirit helps do that. The Holy Spirit helps us in that walk. The Holy Spirit wants to, wants to do some incredible things in and through you. And the, the Bible talks about some gifts of the Spirit. And so there's actually uh, nine gifts of the Spirit that he talks about that I want to talk about this morning, and uh, and so I'm actually going to break them into groups. I want you to see this. They're going to be in three different groupings, and so I want to show you that here this morning. But let's, let's look at these passages in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to start, start in verse 4. It says this, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. So there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. So you have one source with many different outcomes. Uh, and so this is important. So this different, but they're the same. Uh, I have a sit. My, my sister. I have one sister and two brothers. So there was four of us growing up. And my sister likes to make words up and phrases up. And so you, she used to say same difference. If you called her out on something, and she was wrong. Same difference. I don't even know what that means. Does that even make same difference? What does that even mean? So I almost titled this message "Same Difference" because because we have the same source as a spirit. We all have different gifts, and so we got to get that this morning. My sister was bad about making stuff up uh, for a long time, and to this day, she still calls it Disney World. <laughs> There's no L in Disney, and uh, so just she just be making stuff up, and then she will tell you that you're wrong. She'll tell you the sky is green, and she will convince you convince you that the sky is green. But she used to say "Same Difference." I didn't know what that meant. I still don't know what that means. But, but it sounds right here because we have the same spirit with different gifts. And so we all, it always looks different. So it's very important. But this word for gifts is important. The actual, the actual word, like sometimes Greek words sound funny and look funny. You can't hardly pronounce them. But the word for gift is, is charisma. It's actually the word charisma where we get charismatic. And so the church, I'm just going to tell you, the church has uh, tainted that. Uh, when you talk about uh, charismatic groups, sometimes that people go, oh, I'm not going there. They're charismatic. Uh, what, all it means is gift. It means that they're walking in their gifts. And I'm just going to tell you, I don't think the church enough walks in its gifts. And so I'm going to share with you the nine gifts of the Spirit this morning. And I hope that you'll f- figure out which one yours is and start walking in it. When we have growth track, which is actually going on during the second service. And so today is step three. Is this the third week of the month? Step three, step two, step three. So last week they did, uh, they did their, their spiritual gifts test. And so you go through growth track and you will find out what your spiritual gift is. You'll find out what your personality is. It's important because we want to put you on a team and where you can serve, where, you're, where your gift, uh, where you can actually be charismatic. You can actually uh, uh, flourish in that gift and in that walk. And it's very important for you to do that. So there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them. So that's very important for us to get. Look at the next verse, verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. So there you see that. You have different kinds of service. That's why I'm not more important than you. The person making the coffee this morning 
which is delicious, is not more important or less important than I am. And we're all the same. We all have one job to do. We have a, a place that we fit. We have a, a purpose and a calling, but it's for the same Lord. So the source is the same, but we all have different kinds of service. And so we can't, we can't, we can't say that one's more important than the other because it's just not. Um, I'm, I'm just telling you right now, this, I'm not, this is not false humility. I'm just telling you, I'm not more important than you are. I'm replaceable. I'm going to tell you the first thing, the best thing I ever learned uh, when I was a young uh, employee was I'm replaceable. I was looking around at people getting fired. I'm just like, I thought that dude was going to retire here. He was replaceable. And guess what? The next morning, the doors opened, the lights came on, and we had business. You're repla- I'm just going to tell you, you're replaceable. I'm replaceable. You're not more important than anybody else, and I'm not more important than anybody else. And, and I just want you to hear that this morning. You don't get to trump everything else that's going on. We have the same Lord that we're serving with different kinds of service, so it's very important, and they're all important. And we're going to look at a few verses at the end that just shows us that. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. So here we see that same difference. You have different work happening, but it's the same source. And we can't miss that this morning. If we have the same source, that means we have the same mission. Now, there's all different kinds of, of, of ministries that you can get into and, and different kind of, uh, of places that you can go. You can do missions. Uh, I mean, if you want to look at a team yesterday uh, building, uh, putting a roof on a house. Uh, I mean, we, we have people that go give backpacks away. We have people that go bring food. We have people that, that just show up and pray for people. Uh, we actually have a team that I go through and pray through people's houses. And so there's not one team that's more important than others. They're all different things that we do, but the source is the same. And I'm going to tell you why we have different gifts here in just a second. And I'm going to say it about 10 times. You're not going to miss it today. But I'm going to tell you why God gave us all these gifts. But you may serve different. Your serve may look different than mine. Your gifts may, I hope they do. They need to look different. Listen, y'all, y'all don't want me up here with a guitar leading worship. I'm just telling you right now, you do not want me doing that. Um, I, I'm a decent coffee maker. Um, you don't want me to, we have an amazing uh, photo booth back here uh, that we want you families to go take some pictures when all this is over if you haven't done that already. I didn't do that. You can look at, look at it straight up and say, I didn't, do, you know I didn't do it. I don't have an eye for that, so I can't do that. We need your gifts, we need your abilities because I can't do it without you. And hopefully you can't do it without me. We're all going to do it together because we have the same God, but we work, he works in different ways. So we have all these different teams here at WRC. Uh, in fact, we have 25 different teams that you can jump on. Oh, man, I just, I just don't, I don't want to make coffee. Well, if you're good with kids, we have a team for that. I just, I just, I think I might end up slapping a kid. Okay, we'll put you in first impressions, okay? We don't, we don't, we don't slap kids here. We've wanted to. But maybe a kid's thing, ain't you think? That's cool. We have a team for you. I'm just telling you right now, we have a team for you. We have a team that you can serve on because the source is the same. And let me just show you this. I want you to see it on the screen. WRC has over 200 servants on 25 different teams. There's a team for you. We have a place for you. If you're wondering if you have a place, we have a place for you. You need to start working on that spiritual gift God's given you and start exercising it. Um, it's important. I mean, you can work out all you want to, but until you actually get into the ball game, it doesn't really do you a whole, good, a whole lot of good. You can talk the talk, but until you walk the walk, it doesn't matter. And some of y'all have been sitting in chairs for the last year going, I'm going to do that one day. Make it today. Call grandma up. You're going to be late for lunch. Just stay for growth track. Go through growth track. Do step three today and do one, two, and four next month and get onto a team. It's important. It's important. It's important. And so, so we have a team for you. It's important. Uh, and so every one of our team members, there's a different combination of spiritual gift and personality. Um, I was talking to some people the other day, and I, I was kind of getting frustrated with them, if I'm just being honest with you. And so a few days ago, I'm just getting frustrated but I, I knew that their temperament, and I knew their temperament was a certain temperament, and I knew their gift was a certain gift, and I understood better just to have a little more patience with them because they're different than I am. And so it's important. So, so let's get into the spiritual gifts. Here's what the Bible says in, in verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 12. A spiritual given, is gift is given to each of us, and here's why. If we, don't, if we lose the why, we'll lose our way. Here's the why. We, can't, we cannot miss the why. Um, I have seen people have a gift of something like prophecy. They would have a gift of, of just, and, and, I mean, they'd be able to just see the future and, and speak the future. And I'm just gonna, very accurate. Um, I've seen that in my life in ministry for the last, I've been in ministry for 45 years. Uh, I, I know it looks like it, right? I've been, in, I've really, my dad's been a pastor my whole life. Um, so for 45 years, I have seen people who put their gift above the body. Anybody ever seen that? 
You seen it at your job. You, somebody thought that they were all that in a bag of chips, and guess what? They were replaceable because here's why we have the gifts, so we can help each other. That's why we have the gifts. It ain't so you can blow your chest out and say, look at me, look how important I am. We have the gifts of the Spirit so we can help each other. We can't miss that this morning. We cannot miss that. We have to all work together. In fact, the body of Christ is at its best when all of us are, we have all of our gifts working together. That's when we're at our best. When you do what God made you to do and I do what God made me to do, again, I'll tell you, you don't want me up here on stage with a microphone and a guitar. You just don't want me up here. I'm just going to tell you, you will not come back. But some of y'all don't want to be up here with a microphone preaching either. You have a gift. I have a gift. Let's all walk in it because the body of Christ is at its best when we're all walking in our gift. And in our gifting is when we see God move in a powerful way and when we can get into our lane. I was watching some races yesterday, and I don't even remember what it was, a 400 meter, I think. And, well, they just took off running. And I just thought, man, if that guy on the third lane, if he would just slide over the inside lane, he could take them. He could, well, you can't. You've got to stay in your lane. You cannot be crossing over on, into other people's lanes. It's a foul. You can't do that. But I just thought, how many times do we do that in the church? And I'm just going to tell you, as a pastor, sometimes it's real easy just to go do something because there's nobody else to do it. When we started the church, it was me and my wife and my kids. We cleaned the church. We scheduled. Now, we had some incredible team members that, that were here at the beginning, too. But at some point, we were the ones up here. We were cleaning. We were scheduling. We did it. I mean, we did it all between a, a couple of our families, a few families. We did it all. But now we can step back and go, okay, God's bringing people in to do that. Uh, this morning, we had a man show up that just off the street just showed up. And I'm sitting there talking to Scott Winfrey, and the Holy Spirit said, that's his man. And so I introduced him to Scott. They started talking, and Scott got to pray over him and witness to him. It was incredible. Now, as a pastor, though, that's your job to do that. No, my job is to empower you to do God's work that he's called you to do. That's what God's called me to do. And we're at our best. The body of Christ is at its best when we're all working together. What does that mean for you? It means you need to go through growth track. It means you need to find out what your gifting is, find out how you can plug in, how you can jump in, and what you can do to make the body of Christ better. So let's look at, let's look at all the gifts of the Spirit. There's nine of them, like I said, and we're going to group them into three groups so you can better understand them. So here's what he says. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. Some of y'all ain't got that one. Some of y'all ain't never had it. To give wise. Man, you need some people like this in your life. That gives you wise advice. To another, the same spirit, he gives a message of special knowledge. And so let me break those down uh, just very briefly. The difference between wise advice and special knowledge, it's important for us to get that. Wise advice is just generic. A spe special knowledge is what we call a word of knowledge, and it's specific to your situation. So a word of knowledge, a special knowledge, a word of special knowledge is, is a word that somebody gives you because of what you're going through specifically. You can have wise, wise advice is don't go into debt. Wise advice is, you know, finish high school. Wise advice is don't have kids before you get married. Wise advice is make sure you, that when you, uh, when you go all in at work that you really do the work God called you to do and you really commit to them. Wise advice is don't steal from your job. Like there's some generic wise advice that you can go through. But then there's some specific words of knowledge that you're going through specifically. That's the difference between those two. Here's, here's the, another passage. The next verse, verse 9 says this. The same spirit, here we see the same spirit, same source again, gives great faith. Here's another gift to another. And to someone else, the spirit gives a gift of healing. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it again in a minute, but I'm going to keep saying it. You have access to all these gifts if you know Jesus as your Savior. You're going to walk in one or two or maybe three, maybe just one. That's, you're going to walk in. It's going to be easy for you. It's, just, it's going to be your wheelhouse. But you have access to all these things because it is the same spirit that's doing it. There's going to be some that you're, you're better at than others. But, but faith and healing is a big one. We need faith and healing in the church today. Uh, I've heard a lot of stories of people, you know, struggling right now physically with some issues going on. You need healing. You need God's healing, his his. his, uh, his Perfect healing. And I'm, a, I'm just going to tell you this. I'm going to just take a little step out there and say this. You go and read the New Testament, you will see Jesus forgive people of their sins and then heal them. And then what did he say? Go and sin no more. So there is a tie to sin and sickness. Now, I'm, am I telling you that every sickness is tied to sin? No, but I'm just going to tell you, you have to do some, some soul search and say, God, what is going on in my life? What do I need to get straight? Uh, expose these things in my life. But I'm just going to tell you, sometimes you can have faith for other people you can't even have for yourself. Sometimes you can pray for other people for an issue that you're actually walking through right now and you have not seen healing yet. And I don't know how that works. I don't understand it. But it's a gift of the Spirit. Faith is a gift of the Spirit, and healing is a gift of the Spirit. Now, again, I'm going to go back through and break these down for you. 
He gives the one the power to perform miracles, so we know another powerful miracle, uh, uh, another powerful gift, and to another the ability to prophesy. It's funny because I didn't even tell Kat that I was preaching on this this morning. We just did a song named Prophesy, called Prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit or from, from another spirit. So, so he says, I have, I have, you have all these abilities, all these things that you can walk in, miracles, prophecy, discernment. Uh, I'm just going to tell you, you need somebody with some discernment in your life. You need somebody that knows what, what, what should happen and what shouldn't happen. People with discernment, they kind of, I love them, but it's just like I just feel like sometimes they're always kind of negative. It's just like not everybody's bad. Like there's got to be somebody that's good. Um, there's got to be somebody that actually is doing what they say they're going to do. But, but the sermon, you can, they can't help it. It's just like they, they know, when they meet somebody, they already know. You need somebody like that. You need somebody close to you that has a sermon to tell you whether or not you should be with, in a certain group or not, with a certain person or not. Uh, it's, it's important. The sermon's important. A job, taking a job or not taking the job. Here's the cool thing about a sermon. You don't even know why. When you have this sermon, you're just like, I don't know about that person. You don't even know why. You have no reason to know why you, you shouldn't trust that person. But something inside, that's the sermon. The sermon's not based on what they see. The sermon's based on what they, what's really almost a feeling. It's, a, it's in the spirit. So it's important. The sermon's important. And he says, still, another person is given the ability to speak unknown language, just to my tongues, while another's given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is important that we walk in all of these gifts, and they're, they're so, so important. So tongues is here. Interpretation is here. It's very, very important. Look at the next verse right here in verse 11. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Now, again, you're going to have a gift or two gifts, but you're going to have access to all of them. You're going to have access to all of them. Um, let, me, let me explain. Um, you're driving down the road. You see a car wreck. God you feel like you should pull over. There's a person there who's not doing too well. Maybe they're not going to make it. And, and God is asking you to pray over them. Maybe you don't walk in healing. Maybe that's not something that you pray over a whole lot. But I'm just going to tell you, God will use you in that moment to pray healing over that person. Now, does it mean you walk in it all the time? Maybe not. Does it mean it's something that you're, you're great at? No, but when I've, what I've found is when I open my mouth in obedience, God just fills it with his word. It's powerful. It's so, so powerful. And so he alone decides who gets what, but we, I believe that we all have access to all of these gifts, so it's important for us to walk in them, and here's why we need to walk in them. All right, we can't forget the why. All these gifts are amazing. We need discernment. We need words of knowledge. We need healing. We need faith. We need all those things, prophecy, all those things. But if we miss the why, we'll, miss the, we'll, miss our, we'll lose our way if we lose our why. Here it is. So we can help each other. This is why we have gifts, so we can help each other. We don't have gifts so you can stand on stage and stick your chest out and go, look what I did. No, we have the gifts of the Spirit so that we can help each other out. So, so let me break these down into three different categories for you because it maybe help you see it a little bit better. There are three different categories. So you have nine gifts, and there's three in each one of these categories. So that, that's three and three, that's nine. So here they are. Here's the discerning gifts. So you have a, a, a gifts of discernment. So you have discerning gifts. And so, again, you need somebody that walks in one of these three uh, around you at some point, but here's the gifts right here. First of all, it's wise advice. You need some wisdom in your life, and I say this all the time. I'll keep saying it. When you go for advice, I hope the person breaks out the scripture. I hope the person that you're talking to gives you a scripture of some sort and says, here's what the word of God says. Now, I know a lot of people have a lot of experience, but nobody has experience like God does. You need to have somebody in your life that gives you wise advice. It's so important. It's so important to, to know what to do. I'm, 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 I am the um, result of wise advice from my father. Um, I've had jobs come up. I, I remember one time I applied. My, my buddy Scott Davis at the time, this was in the mid-'90s. That's how long I've known the, Davis, the Davises. And, um, and so he, he was working at CNC Audio. Well, Scott Davis is a salesman. He's got the personality. He's a salesman. I mean, he can, he can just go sell some stuff. I don't. And so he's like, man, we're, we're hiring, and you get this commission, and you get this little, it's a little bitty, itty bitty, itty, itty, itty bitty salary right here. But then, you, then you, if you sell some stuff, you make some money. And I was just like, that sounds pretty good. I can go sell a refrigerator. So I went and talked to my dad, and I was like, dad, man, Scott and them, they're hiring, and, and, and this is what they do, and this is a salary, and, but if I sell this much stuff, I'll get And dad just goes, I don't think that's for everybody. <laughs> And that was his nice way of saying, that's a good way to starve. That's really what he was trying to say. 
Because, I mean, we were, you know, at that point I was about to start a family and all that stuff. And, but that was, it was advice because he knew my personality. He knew I wasn't going to, you, know, uh, you know, always be, ABC, always be closing. Uh, shoot, I'll just always, uh, ABL, always be letting them go. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be ABL and all the time. I, I wouldn't lock people in. That's uncomfortable for me to be like, what does it take for me to put you in a vehicle today? I can't do that. It's not my personality. And he knew that. And so I needed that wise advice. You need somebody with wise advice in your life. Here's the second one that's in the discerning gifts uh, portion in this category, and that's special knowledge, uh, uh, what we call a word of knowledge. And again, a word of knowledge is something specific to your situation. Um, I've, I've heard of people, I've had people come up to me and say, hey, God's doing this right now, and here's what's going to happen. And, and it was a word of knowledge for me in the moment that I was in, and it helped me get through. Um, when I was, uh, I was ordained in the ministry, in Kirbyville, Texas, and I had, there was incredible people there, people I didn't, I didn't even know them, I just didn't know them, but I'm just going to tell you, the same spirit was at work in them that was in work in me, and so when they would speak over me, and some of the words they spoke over me, I just almost couldn't receive them, it was like, that's, I just don't see that happening, I don't see how there's going to be a church full of people, I don't see how anybody's going to come listen to the words that God gives me, I don't see how I'm going to ever pray over somebody and see them get healed, and they gave me these incredible words, and I stored them away, and I didn't fully believe them, but I kept going back to them. And one of the words one of the ladies, she gave me, she said, listen, when, not if, she said, when you pray for somebody with a huge issue and they get healed, with, with, whether it's cancer or, or, or whatever, back pain, whatever it is, and they get healed, the first thing you need to do is go in your closet and shut the door and give him all the glory. She knew my tendency was going to be for me to get the glory, to raise my hand and say, hey, look what I did. Um, I was praying over, I was in California, I was in um, northern California, kind of like, not really northern, I guess, central California, it was the pretty part, you know, where it's got all the, the vineyards and stuff. And I think of the Thousand Oaks, I think, is where I was. And so I was in Thousand Oaks, and I'm at this meeting, and I'm teaching my dad's material. I'm praying for the lost. And so I get done, and this guy comes up to me, and he goes, well, you just lay hands on me and pray for me. Now, again, I'm early in my ministry, y'all. Like, I, I, I prayed over maybe five people at that point. Up to that point, I had zero experience in this. And so I was just like, um, ah, okay. And so I laid hands on him and started praying for him. And we got done, and he was like, man, I just felt the power of God follow me when you prayed for me. I was like, I ain't feel nothing. But I think that was God giving me confidence that even though I don't feel it, something's happening. You can't go off of feelings. You cannot go off. When you walk in these things, it's going to feel like nothing's happening. God is working. And you need some people with these gifts. Here's the other one. Let me give this one to you real quick, and that is discernment. We already talked about that. You need discernment. Somebody that discerns in your life is very, very important. These are the discerning gifts, wise advice, special knowledge, and discernment. Here's what the Bible says about uh, having knowledge and, and words of knowledge. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and the depths of insight. So he says it's very important that you, that you walk in this knowledge, that you walk in this insight. He said, he said my prayer for you is that you, 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 your love may abound and you walk in this. And he says this, so that you may be able to discern what is best. This was Paul's prayer to the Philippians, that you may discern what is best and may you be pure and blameless before the day of Christ. And so it's important, it's important, it's important. He says, I want you to walk in this so much that you go help some more people. And that's what he wanted us to do. Here's the second group of gifts, and that's the declarative gifts. This is the, this is the things that are spoken. These are words that are spoken. These are things that uh, come out of our mouth. That we actually declare these. Here's the first one. That is prophecy. Um, prophecy is not something that we talk about a whole lot. Prophecy is something that we kind of, ooh, that stays over there. It is a gift of the Spirit, prophecy is. Now, I know prophets, and you know prophets, that put their gifts above the Spirit. And it's about them, and that, that ain't cool. But I also know, but man, we had a couple of prophets here over the years, and I'm just going to tell you, when they spoke a word, it was just like, there was just silence in the room. In fact, there were some, I had, some I would have to beg to get on stage and hand them a microphone and say, will you please just speak this word that God's given you over the church? I had to beg them to do it. That's how you know you got the right ones. So Because it happens a lot where prophets put their gifting above the body. And why do we have the gifts? So we can help each other out. We have the gifts, we can help each other out. So prophecy is a big deal. When you prophesy, it's a big, big deal. Tongues is another one. Now, again, I talk about charisma, right? This, is, this, is, this has been tainted, um, but, but I didn't make this up. This passage comes right out of Scripture in 1 Corinthians 12. Tongues is part of the gifts of the Spirit. Now, there's a couple of levels of tongues. I don't have time to get into it this morning, but there's other languages, and then there's prayer language, <clears throat> 
So when you have prayer language, tongues is important for a couple reasons. I'll give you one real quick. When you pray in tongues, when you speak in tongues, and again, don't freak out on me. I know it's baby dedication. We've got a lot of guests here today. But when you do that, what happens is the devil doesn't know what the plan is because you don't even know what you're saying. It's, it's incredible, but, but I'm not going to dig into this a lot. But I just want to know this is a gift of the Spirit, and this is a declarative gift. And it's important that we, Paul says, look, do love above everything else. You don't have to have tongues to love people. But I'm just going to tell you, when you get some of these gifts, it will take you to another level you didn't know you could get to. It's important. And then and here's the sixth one. This one's important, too, interpretation. Because this, is, this done without that uh, is not biblical. Uh, but why do we have the gifts of the Spirit? So we can help. So we can help each other. So if, if, if somebody gets up and speaks in tongues and nobody, nobody uh, interprets it, it didn't help the body. It was, a, it was pride. I was in Africa uh, doing some meetings, and um, it's kind of a long story. I don't have time to tell you all of them, but, but at that time, I had just started preaching. I had maybe preached 10 messages, and so I was going over there, and we were going to preach for three weeks, five days a week to different groups of people, and I was going to have like probably two or three hours a day that I was going to be preaching. All right, so you multiply three times five, that's 15 hours a week for three weeks. I was not looking forward to it. So we get over there. I didn't quite make it there. My stuff got stolen. They stole my Bible, all my notes, my, uh, uh, my passport was gone, all my, my cash was gone. They stole everything from us. It's a long story. But, but here's what happened. I had every note I had ever written, y'all. I had, every, I had everything I could ever think of that I had written down that might be a message, and it was all gone. I had to start from scratch. And God used that to show me that, that I don't need the notes. I need him. I need him. And while we're over there, this person starts speaking. And so he starts to prophesy. Uh, tongues got involved. So he stopped prophesying, and then he starts speaking in tongues. And it, was a, it, was, it was, felt, felt like a show. And the guy that's running the whole thing goes, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is, you're out of the spirit now. This is about you right now. And ca- in front of all the pastors, he called him out. I was like, oh, my. I was like, burn. <laughs> because he sensed that what he was doing was a show. Because if you have this without this, it doesn't build anybody up. Are y'all with me? So you do it to build each other up. You do it to help each other out. It's very, very, very important that we have prophecies because it's, it, all these things matter, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation. Acts 2.17 tells us this. In the last days, God said, I will pour my spirit on all people. You know all does not just mean the church. He said, I'm pouring my spirit on all people, and the last days are here, I believe. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your young men will have visions, and your old men will dream dreams. So you're going to have visions and dreams and prophecies. That's what's going to happen in the last days. I'm going to pour my spirit on all flesh. Um, my wife is a dreamer in more ways than one. But she's a dreamer at night, too. And so, so she's, she's had a couple of dreams. In fact, probably poo, seven years ago, she had a dream that she got in a phone call. And she was on 210 and one of the curves kind of about Home Depot and stuff, and she got a phone call, and when she looked down to grab her phone, she ran off the road and, went and hit a tree. She told me about that dream the next morning. That day, at that time, on her way home from work, she's working at the hospital at the time, her phone rang at that same exact point where she was in her dream. And guess what she didn't do? She didn't answer it, even though it was me calling. I kind of feel bad about that. I'm like, you told me that that happened in the dream, and then I'm the one that calls you? So wise advice is not my thing, okay? I'm, uh, I'm picking. So, so, but she had that dream, and, and I believe to this day that that saved her from getting to a car wreck because God was warning her. Now, does every dream mean something? No. Some dreams are prof- prophetic, and some of them aren't. Um, we were laying in bed the other night. This is a couple nights ago. We are laying in bed. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. And my wife let out a scream that you don't even hear in horror movies. Like, it was just, I just can't even mimic it. It was just, imagine the most deep, blood-curdling, long scream in one breath that you can, and that's what she did. I came, look, you ever jump up out of bed with your fist up? Just like, I'll throw down, I'm swinging at stuff, and just like, what's happening? I mean, I expected to see somebody at her bedside with, uh, like, a weapon in their hand. I was about to just, you know, jump on, do some of my, my black belt stuff that I got. I was going to. When you, I'm like a cat, dude. Don't back me into a corner. You gonna, we're going to throw down right here. I had a, I have a shotgun leaning by my bed because it, I let somebody use it, and it's just sitting against my bed. It ain't even loaded, but I was about to grab that thing and just start pumping it. You know, just pumping a shotgun will scare some people. 
So I realized nobody's in the room, so I just hugged her, and I was just like, you're safe, you're okay, you're safe. Well, when Amy has stuff like that, sometimes stuff, ha- like, that means something's going on somewhere because she has this, this discerning spirit. So, so, so immediately I thought something's, somebody, somebody's in trouble. Like, one of our kids, is everybody okay? Fast forward five seconds after all this, and her phone rings, her cell phone rings. I was like, it's Emily or Megan. It's got to be. It's, it's some, something happened. You know, she had this dream, and, you know, it's demonic and all this stuff. <laughs> it was Kai calling from his bedroom. Uh, are y'all okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, the neighbors might call the cops. It was that loud of a scream, y'all. I'm, I'm not, was it that loud, Kai? It was loud. Uh, like, you ever been so scared your eyes water? You're not really crying, but your eyes are water. I, for two hours, I laid in bed, and I had not been sleeping good that week, but that night I had crashed, and I was out. And for two hours, I just laid there staring at the wall, just like my eyes are just filling with water, my chill bumps. It was one of those screams, y'all. She didn't want to go back to bed, go back to sleep because it scared her so bad. Scared her. It scared us. I've just, I've never heard a human, I didn't know a human could make that noise. It was just, oh, my gosh. It was just, oh, I can't even, my eyes are watering. It was, it was crazy. But God gives us dreams sometimes. He says, you're going to, I'm not calling her an old man because he says old men will dream dreams. But, but, but he's saying everybody, young people, old people, everybody, it's going to happen. And God's trying to show you some stuff. And I challenge you, I need to do this as well, but I challenge you to put something by your bed. If you have dreams, put something by your bed because you will not remember the next morning. Uh, or it'll be so scary you'll think it was really, really scary. You ever did that? You had a dream that was so scary you started telling people and it was just like, it was a cookie monster. He really ain't that scary. You know what I mean? But in your dream, it really was that scary. But write that stuff down, and God's maybe trying to show you something. Now, it could be bad pizza. It may not be God. It could be bad pizza making you dream that. But, but write it down and see what God says about it. So here's the last group of, of, of gifts I want to show you this morning, and that's the dynamic gifts. And so here are, the, here are the three dynamic gifts. Faith is the first one. Faith is a gift. It's a gift of the Spirit. Do we all have a measure of faith? Yes, the Bible says we all have a measure of faith. But faith is a gift of the Spirit. And so some people walk in it more than others. They just believe in for God to do something all the time. It's powerful. Uh, here's, the, here's the next the dynamic gift, and that is healing. Healing is a dynamic gift. It's something that we need to walk in. It's something if you have the gift of healing, the church needs you. If you have the gift of healing, the church If you have the gift of faith, the church needs you to walk in that. Uh, we need you to to. to, to to pray over your life group. We need you to pray over your family. We need you to pray over the church. Uh, pray that God brings healing and brings faith, and you have faith for, for those things. Here's the last one, the last dynamic gift, and that is the gift of miracles, the gift of miracles. Now, the gift of miracles is um, it's a pretty neat one because it, it's a gift of miracles. But, but here's the cool thing about a miracle. The reason why you have the gift of miracles is to help each other out. It's not so you can brag and boast and all those things. It's to help each other out. In fact, Jesus was so clear about what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to walk in that he actually says it in the, in the book of John. He says this. Jesus is speaking. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done. What? He raised Lazarus from the dead. He la- raised little girls from the dead. He made the blind see and the lame walk. Listen, this was, he said the, the things that I've done, you're going to do. Think about that for a second. You know Lazarus had to be mad as he could be. He'd been up in heaven for days. The Bible says he started to stink. He'd been in heaven for so long. Can you imagine him? Uh, I think uh, John Chris has a joke on that. But, but you can imagine him putting, his, like, you know, putting the pictures on the wall in his mansion. You know, maybe he's out cutting his grass. And then, bam, he's right back in his body back on earth. You know how ticked off he had to be? Uh, we have a, a neighbor two doors down from us, and, and the husband had been sick for a little while, and he passed away a few years ago. And, and so the, the EMT showed up at their house. He passed away at their house and showed up, and they were trying to revive him, and the daughter walks in. And she says, Mom, if they bring him back to life, he's going to be pissed. <laughs> he was already in heaven. Can you imagine waking up back, back in your body after you've been in the glory of, of God and you're actually getting your mansion ready, you're painting the walls and stuff, and just bam, you're right back in there. But Jesus did that. He healed people. Jesus, did, he multiplied food over and over and over and over. It's important that we walk in that because he says greater works that you're going to do. Not just what I've done, greater works you're going to do than I have done. Why? So we can help each other. That's why we walk in these things, so we can help each other out. So here's what the Bible says. If we keep going, I'm going to read a few more verses here in 1 Corinthians 12. He said, if the whole body were an eye, how would, it, how would you hear? So in other words, you need to walk in your gifting. Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? 
Or if the body had many parts, but our body has many parts, but God has put each of us together just as he wants it to be. Watch this. How strange a body would be if, if you only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but one body. I want to show you something this morning. So I do not have the gift of, uh, I'm, I'm not musical, okay? But so imagine, I'm not going to plug this in. I think you're going to hear my song, just acoustic. You do not want me standing here with this next Sunday. I'm just going to tell you right now, if you see this, please run. Don't stay. Don't hang around. Get out of here. But I do, I'm, a, I'm a just going to show you how good I am. I learned a few things. Let's see if this thing's in tune. Let's, oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. It was the pick. It's out of tune, Macy. I think it's, I think it's out of tune. No, no. You know why I can't play chords? Because I don't know how to play guitar. But guess what? I learned how to play one song. I'm going to play it for y'all. Y'all ready for this? It's a little song I call Birdie Hit the Wall. <laughs> That's good right there. Yeah. So my older brother showed me that. My brother Charlie showed me that song when I was a teenager, and I never forgot it. Birdie Hit the Wall. You don't want why? I, listen, I can't control these, these the slides. They're actually changing slides. You can't see it, but behind the scenes, I can't do everything on the screen. I can't go watch your kids out in the breezeway. I can't high-five everybody. I can't lead every life group. I can't play the keys. We need your help. We need you to walk in your gifts. It's very, very important. Why? So we can help each other. We need to help each other. That's why we have the gifts of the Spirit. Here's the last verse I want to share with you this morning. The eye can never say to the hand. I don't need you. And the head can never say to the feet, I don't need you. And this phrase right here, I'm just going to tell you, this phrasing right here showed me that the moment that the hand says anything, it becomes the mouth. The moment that anybody part says anything that they don't want to do this or they don't want to do that, it becomes the mouth. And I'm just going to tell you, sometimes we've got too many mouths in the church. Your, your gift of the Spirit is not to, to talk your way out of stuff. Your gift of the Spirit is not to be little people. Your gift of the Spirit is prophecy and healing and miracles and wise advice. It's important. It's important. It's important. And as a church, we want you to walk in that. We want you to grow in those steps.